Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's make sure this is working. Yep. Yay. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Praise God. Antonia, God bless you. Thank you for joining this morning. Okay. Praise God. Good morning, Katie. God bless you. God, God bless you, Antonia. Cheryl, God bless you this morning. Thanks, everybody, for um, I had a, a, an appointment yesterday, so I couldn't meet with everybody. But uh, we will be having a extra uh, broadcast on Friday this week to make up for yesterday. So uh, if your Friday schedule is open, we're going to have a Friday broadcast. So just be ready for that. Amen. I'm looking forward to it. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Get myself together here this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. To God be the glory. To you, our God, be the glory. To you, our God, be the glory. For the things you have done. To our God, receive the glory to our god receive the glory to our god receive the glory for the things you have done to our god be the glory to you our god be the glory to our god be the glory for the things you have done I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord, praises to your name, O oh Lord, for your name is great and <clears throat> greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. O oh Lord, praises to your name. O oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. We love you so much, Lord. We so appreciate you. We appreciate you so much, Lord. We love you so much, Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we lift our voice to worship you oh my soul rejoice take joy my king in what you hear let it be a sweet sweet sound in your ear 
Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. We just love you, Lord. We so appreciate you, Lord. What a privilege, Lord. What an honor, Lord, that you would come and be with us today, Lord. You said when two or more, and Lord, there's two or more gathering together right here, this is the internet, in your name. So when two or more gather in your name, you said, there I am. And we thank you. That's exactly what's happening right now. There you are. Here you are in the midst of us, Lord. We worship you this morning. We worship you, Lord. Lord, if we don't do anything else on this broadcast but worship you, then that's fine with me. We just adore you this morning, Lord. We worship you. We praise your holy name. You are worthy of all praise and all glory and all honor. Dominion and authority is yours. We pray, let your kingdom come. Let your will, your will alone be done on earth in us, Lord as it is in heaven, Lord. So we bless you this morning, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We glorify your name. We magnify you, O God. You're worthy, Lord. There is none like you. Where would I be without you, Lord? What would I be without you? Nothing. And I'd be nowhere. We glorify you this morning. We appreciate you so much, Lord. We appreciate you so much, Lord. We appreciate you. We appreciate your presence, Lord. We appreciate your manifested presence, Lord. We so appreciate you this morning. We honor you, Lord. We love you. Lord, what can we do without you? Without you being in our midst, Lord. Who is like you, Lord? Being here with you, Lord. Being here with you, Lord, is more than enough, Lord. Being here together, Lord, as one people, is more than enough with you, Lord. We love you. Every one of us that's watching this broadcast, we say we love you. We adore you and we surrender to you, Lord. We surrender the totality of our being, all that we are, all that we have, all that we ever will be is yours. And we ask you to come and take possession of it, Lord, that you would be the, the Lord Jesus Christ over our lives, over our thoughts, our minds, our bodies, our soul, emotion, that you would be Lord over all. You're the all in all. We ask you to establish your all in all ship in us, Lord, today, Lord. That we bring every thought, every imagination, every high thing, Lord, into captivity of you. And thank you that you remember what we are but dust, Lord. But Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we say, being confident in this one thing, that you, Lord, who have begun this good work in us, that you'll be faithful to complete it in us, even to the day of Christ. We so love you, Lord. We so love you, Lord, today. We just appreciate you, Lord. We so appreciate you, Lord. We appreciate you. We appreciate your presence, Lord. We so appreciate you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. You're worthy of all glory and honor, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, if that's why we're here this morning, just to love you and just to appreciate you, Lord, and that's what you want, Lord, that's what we bring to you, oh God. We bring you the love. We ask you to come into this garden and eat your choicest fruits, the fruits that you have produced within us, Lord. Come and eat those choicest fruits, Lord. Let them satisfy your heart. Let them satisfy your desires, Lord, that we be yours and yours alone. Wow. Wow. 
Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name, Lord. Lord, how you love us, your people, how you're manifesting yourself, making yourself known to us, Lord. Even right now, you're making yourself real and filling each house, each room, each person, God, with your glory. That you're opening up our eyes to see you. You're opening up our ears to hear you. You're opening up our hearts to know you like we've never seen, heard, or known you before. Lord, you're causing the scales to fall off our eyes and putting eyes up upon us, allowing us to buy the gold tried by the fire. And you're covering us, Lord, with your Shekinah glory. We so love you, Lord. We so love you this morning. We so appreciate you, Lord. We love you so much this morning. We appreciate you so much, Lord. Oh, Lord. Blessed Lord. Blessed King. We fall at your feet this morning in humble adoration, Lord. We adore you. We gaze upon your beauty, your loveliness, your sweet attractiveness. And like David, we cry one thing we desire of the Lord that we will seek after, that we might dwell right here, Lord, in your house, in your presence, and gaze upon your beauty and your sweet attractiveness and your loveliness, and that we would inquire, Lord, in your temple. Who is like you, O oh God? Who is like you among all the universe, Lord? There's no one. God of creation, we worship you. We adore you. Father, we adore you, Abba. We adore you, Adonai. We adore you, Principate de Paz. Rey de Reyes, Señor de Señores. Holy God, we adore you. We worship you. We love you, Lord. We so love you, Lord. What other words would you want to hear this morning, Lord? Except we absolutely love you, Lord. Even in our fallings and our shortcomings and our failures, you have given us mercy and forgiveness so that we can love you more and more and more and more. You are worth it, Lord. You're worth everything, Lord. I don't understand your patience. I would have been done with me a long time ago, but God, look at your love and your patience in establishing us and making us and forming us into a kingdom. Kings and priests for you, Lord. Look at your handiwork. Look at your love. Look at your grace. Look at your mercy, Lord. It's the only reason why we're here today. It's the only reason why we're still alive today is by you, Lord. By your love for us. By your grace. By your mercy. We adore you, Lord. There is none like you, O oh God. I love you, Lord. We love you so much. We so appreciate you, Lord. Glory, Adonai. Thank you, Lord. We just love you. Just let him know how much you love him, beloved. Just let him know how much you appreciate him this morning. Right there in your room, wherever you're watching this, just let him know as you lift up your hands, say, I just so appreciate you, Lord. I love you. Right? I love you so much, Lord. Just taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Let us taste you this morning. Let us taste of your goodness, Lord. Let us taste and see, Lord. Your goodness in ways we have never known, never understood before, Lord. Let your goodness pass us by, Lord. Let your mercy pass us by. Let your glory pass. 
pass us by, Lord, like you did with Moses. As you hit him in the cleft of the rock, you said, I'm going to pass you by. I'm going to let my glory go. You'll see my back. You'll see my glory. The Lord, the Lord, gracious and full of lovely kindness, even forgiving sins to a thousand generations. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We appreciate you, Lord. To God be the glory, to you our God be the glory, to you our God be all the glory for the things you have done to our God, receive the glory. To our God, receive the glory. To our God, receive the glory for the things you have done. Wow. You are so beautiful, Lord. You are so beautiful. We worship you here in the beauty of your holiness, Lord. We worship you right here in the beauty of your holiness. You are so beautiful, Lord. Beyond description, to marvelous for words behind comprehension. Yes. I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God to whom all praise is due. I stand in awe of you. We stand, we stand in awe of you. We stand, we stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, we stand in awe of you we stand we stand in all of you we stand we stand in all of you holy god to whom all praise is due we stand in all of you we stand, we stand in all of you. We stand, we stand in all of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, we stand in all of you. We stand, we stand in all of you. We stand, we stand in all of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, we stand in all of you.
Let there be glory and honor and praises. Glory and honor to Jesus. All glory and honor. Glory and honor to Him. Let there be glory and honor and praises. Glory and honor to you, Jesus. Glory and honor. Glory and honor to you. Let there be glory and honor and praises. Glory and honor to Jesus. Glory and honor. Glory and honor to you. Yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. We say yes to your will. We say yes to your plans. We surrender, Lord. We surrender. We surrender to you, Lord. The totality of our being, we surrender to you all that we have. All that we are, all that we ever will be is yours. It's yours. We belong to you, Lord. You purchase us out of every tribe and every nation. You purchase us with your own blood. And you are forming us into a kingdom of kings and priests unto you, our God, to rule with you forever and ever and ever. Overwhelming, overwhelming, overwhelming love, overwhelming, overwhelming, overwhelming. Love overwhelming, overwhelming, overwhelming love, overwhelming, so overwhelming, overwhelming. Is your love overwhelming? So overwhelming, overwhelming is your love. You're overwhelming, so overwhelming, overwhelming. Is your love overwhelming? So overwhelming, overwhelming is your love. So overwhelm us, overwhelming, overwhelm us. Overwhelming love, we surrender, Lord, we surrender all, we surrender to your love, overwhelming, 
so overwhelm me, overwhelm me is your love, so overwhelm us, Lord, overwhelm us, overwhelm us in your love, so we can overwhelm you. Lord, overwhelm you, so we can overwhelm you with our love. To overwhelm you, overwhelming love, we want to overwhelm you with our love. So overwhelm us. Overwhelming love, overwhelm us with your love, so we can love you the way you made us to, so we can overwhelm you by our love for you, so overwhelm us. Lord, overwhelming love, so overwhelming is your love, is your love. We so want to love you, Father. Beyond our human reason, we want to overwhelm you with our love for you as you've overwhelmed us with your love for us. As Paul prayed, we want to apprehend you. You've apprehended us. Teach us how to apprehend you. Teach us how to apprehend you in every fire of our, fiber of our being, Lord. So we are wholly yours. We love you. We appreciate you, Lord. Taste and see. Hmm. Taste and see that you, Lord, are good. Thank you, Lord. How great is our God. Come and see how great is our God. Oh, da, 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 da. I forgot the words. How great is our God. In your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence, oh Lord, my God. In your presence, that's where I belong, seeking your faith. Touching your grace in the cleft of the rock, in your presence, O oh God. Mm. How lovely is the Lord. You're so beautiful, Lord. We adore you this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for the privilege of knowing you. Thank you for the privilege of being your sons and daughters. Thank you for the privileges of, 
privilege of being adopted into your family of Jesus for the blood you shed your life that you gave up for us. We're so appreciate you, Lord. We so thank you, Lord. Not only did you save us, but you're finishing us, Lord. You're completing us, Lord. You're making us your own, your own ones, Lord. Your chosen vessels, Lord. Your wise virgins, Lord, that can come and be with you. We love you so much, Lord. We appreciate you. We so appreciate you, Lord. Yes, he's a name above all names. That's right, Cheryl. Amen. Everlasting to ever, everlasting to everlasting. Yes, he is, Layla. Mm. How wonderful is the Lord. <laughs> How wonderful, how good is the Lord this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord. How wonderful is the Lord. What a privilege is giving us just to lift up our worship to him this morning in song and our adoration. Hallelujah. What a privilege it is to be here with the Lord and with you just to lift up our hands and worship him and adore him. Overwhelming love. Overwhelming love. Amen. Wow, he's overwhelming me this morning. I think he's overwhelming all of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We love you so much, Lord. We so appreciate you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Ancient of Days, that's right, Sister Crystal. Amen. Hallelujah. Great is our God, amen, and worthy to be praised. Wow. Thank you, Lord. This is his meeting. It says broadcast. Not my will. God's will. We have to learn how to be in a constant state of intervention, like now. To me, this is not about a broadcast. It's about being with the Lord and being with each other. The Lord is the agenda. He's the beginning and the end. He's the agenda, that's why we're here. And if he wants to be worshiped, then we will worship him. I mean, you know, if he wants us to worship him right now, we that's what we'll do. We did and we are. Just seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? We need to bring the Lord offerings of righteousness. What does the Lord want? What does he want when we come together? See, these broadcasts can't be a routine. I don't believe they are. I believe that they're walking the spontaneity of the Lord. These broadcasts are to reveal the spontaneity of the Lord. The divine intervention of the Lord. I believe that's what they're about. That's why the Lord... Has me do the gatherings and the broadcast like this because it's the show with spontaneity, his direction, his directorship <laughs> as the master conductor, that he may teach us his ways, that we learn how to follow him. Amen. It doesn't make sense just to do this, right? But if it's just about teaching, then this would be so out of place. It was just about, you know, just teaching the word of God in the way that we've been used to it. But we're not here to teach the word of God. We're here to know the word of God, the person who became flesh. And if he wants to be worshiped and loved and adored, what is that to us except to bring him what he wants? Satisfy his heart. And whatever it is the Lord desires to do, he'll do it. And we'll follow him by that cloud by day, fire by night. It's inside of us. He said, I'm going to teach you. I, the Lord, will teach you and instruct you in the ways that you should go. Like now, and I'll guide you with my own eye. What a beautiful illustration of that. I didn't plan this. I no idea what the Lord was going to do. I actually I just stepped out of the room, heated up my coffee, and I sat down. And as I was walking back in the room, I heard the Lord. Say, sing to me, you know, um, to God be all the glory. 
I thought I would sing it once and then move on. But look what the Lord did by following him. We're experiencing him, his manifested presence. I mean, in this room, I can feel the manifested presence of the Lord. I know he's here and I hope you can do. So he's not leaving. Even, even as I continue to share, I pray that he's having me flow as that master conductor, you know, that he's teaching us how to be a director of heaven on the earth, how to release on heaven and earth. And you've got to be in a, a place of obedience to the Lord that you can get out of the box, so to speak, of, of, of how things are. It's so easy to get religious, hmm? so easy to, to make everything a formula in our life. But we serve an out-of-the-box God because <laughs> he doesn't fit in the box. And if these times together are to learn of him, to know him, to see him, experience him, and most of all, to know his ways, then these broadcasts will be what God intended them to be. I just know that the Lord wants to keep things simple because in the religious age, the church age, we've taken the simple and we made it complex. Almost like the Pharisees, they made the yoke so hard that nobody could carry them. And today with so much going on and what people are saying and preaching, it's, it's almost impossible to live a Christian life with a religious yoke on you. It is for freedom. Christ has set us free. You know, I was sharing with you on Sunday. You know, I woke up to that song, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. You know, as God's been dealing with me with some things in my life, and issues, attitudes that need to change. Allowed us to go through quite a bit of pressure. And the pressure, you see what you have of the Lord and you see what you have not. <laughs> God wants to strengthen what you have and he wants to remove what, what, what you don't have. He wants to remove that which is keeping you from what you need to have. And so when I got in the shower, I just started singing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. And, you know, and again, the promptings of the Lord, the, the intimations of the Lord, of God guiding us with his own eyes. And, you know, as I was walking in the room, like, like now, I was just walking into my room here. This is my room that it's kind of set apart for the Lord's purposes. And as I walked into it, you know, I, I've, I just heard that, like I, in my spirit, you know, where, what would I be without you? And, and I just sat down on the keyboard as we started the gathering Sunday and I, all of a sudden I got these two chords, I started playing them and that song came out, you know, what, 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 would, I, what would I be without you? Where would I be without you? And then for an hour and a half, the Lord moved in that song. But you see, that was a spontaneity of the Lord. It was a guidance by his own eyes. I didn't, I didn't hear the Lord say, Henry, sing, I will sing of the mercy of the Lord forever. I didn't hear the Lord say, Henry, I want you to sing, you know, uh, that. No, this was an intervention. This is, was a continuous intervention of God's glory. It was leading me to sing, leading me, working in me, teaching me guiding me, just like he's doing in you in ways that you we don't understand. We're learning how to occupy till he comes. And as I was singing, I will sing in the mercy of the Lord forever. I meant it with every fiber of my being. I was singing of his mercies. And thank God, because I need his mercies. I knew what every morning, how many of you need that new mercy this morning? But God, God wants us to be so sensitive to his sensitivity so that he can teach us and train us in the ways that we should go, in the ways. See, that's an action word, in the ways, not just a way, not in a work. It doesn't say I'm going to teach and change. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to teach you, instruct you in the work I need you to do. No, it says, I'm going to teach you and train you, Psalm 32, 8, in the ways that you should go, and I'm going to guide you with my own eye.
to be trained by the Lord, to be equipped by the Lord. It takes a great breaking and a great discipline in your life to become sensitive to his sensitivity. That's a word this morning, isn't it? To be sensitive to his sensitivity. If we're going to be led, we have to be led by his sensitivity. It's a continuous state of intervention in which the Lord's divine control will be affected. I've been teaching about God's glory. This glory realm is about a continuous state of divine intervention. I had no thought of singing, you know, and even, you know, I think we'll worship the Lord for 30 minutes in the first part of this broadcast. That doesn't make sense when you're trying to do a broadcast and we're supposed to be about teaching, but that was teaching. The teacher was teaching us what he wanted. The teacher was drawing us to him, loving him, worshiping him. That's what he wanted right then and there. I could have went in another direction. I could have used my brain. You could have used your wisdom. You could have shut off and said, I don't really feel like worship. I came to get a teaching. And that's what we do when we go to church on Sunday. I came to get the word. You would think of after 2000 years of getting the word, we would know the word. I'm not talking about the scriptures. I'm talking about the word of God himself. But at the end of the church age, he says to the late, late church at Laodicea, you say you're rich in need of nothing, but you're blind, poor, and naked. I counsel you to buy gold tried by the fire. There's such a spontaneity of the Lord. There's such a spontaneity of the glory realm. The glory realm requires a teachability because it's giving us a functionality. It's teachability that produces a functionality. Glory functions. What does glory do? It transforms everything. It touches. But to walk in that glory realm, for that glory realm to continue to walk in us, we have to be in that continuous state of teachability, to be led by the Spirit, those that are led by the Spirit of God. They're the sons of God. And if you notice at the end of the age, they're not teachable. They're rich and need nothing. They say they're rich. They're, they lost their teachability. And when you lose your teachability, you lose your accountability. We become accountable to men and to man's wisdoms instead of our accountability to God and his wisdom. The glory realm comes when we give the Lord that teachable heart. That, that, that we remain pliable and teachable. And that's why when it's talked of the children of Israel in the book of Acts, it says the children of Israel, they knew the works of God. That's the church age. But Moses, Moses knew the ways of God. And that's why you hear in the church age and from pulpit after pulpit about power, glory, dominion, taking our cities, doing all this work. It's all about the works of God. But you very few, very few will you hear on all the internet that will teach you the ways of God. They will teach you about power, about prayer, about all that you can do. But what's lacking is all that you can be with the Lord, in the Lord. And what the Lord is forming us into is a kingdom of kings and priests filled with that glory. A new Jerusalem city coming down like a bride. I understand there's work to do. I understand there's much work to do, but that work is God's work. We are his workmanship. We're being made into his workmanship so that those works that he has for us are already predestined for us to walk in the steps of a righteous man. They're ordered of the Lord. I don't have to be concerned about doing the work, but I must be concerned with becoming his workmanship so that the Lord can work with me, work in me, work through me work in you, work through you, so that it's his works. The works that I do, Jesus said, these are the Father works. These are his works. These are his words. Can we say that? When we look at our church life and look at the church, can we really say that the works that I'm doing are the works of Jesus? I don't think we can because they're filled with mixture of us and the Lord, us trying to do what the Lord asked us to do. That's why you don't hear anybody testifying. These works that I do, these are the works of Jesus. This is what our ministry is doing. This is what our ministry work is doing. This is what we're building. But it's the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Jesus 
The spirit of prophecy is the Lord doing, the Lord working, the Lord being seen as a witness. It's a testimony of Jesus. The testimony of our lives completely indwelled with him as Lord. For that to happen, that's why he's sending us his end time glory. And that glory has a functionality. We have to function. But our function isn't to go do works. Our function is to become a kingdom, a priest and kings unto our God. Our function is to become something that God can work and establish his governmental order upon the earth. God will establish, establish his governmental order through a governmental people who are governed by him. Right now, we're learning how to be governed personally. We have to learn how to be governed by his lordship. Every year of our life given completely to, to under his headship, under his lordship. And we're not, there are some that are probably there already in maturity. I'm not. I'm, I'm still in the process of it. There are probably people a lot further down the road than I am. But I desire it. And I want to learn it. I want to teach, I want the Lord to teach me his ways. Instruct me in the ways that I need to go. So one thing about the glory realm is it, 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 the glory realm is a continuous state of intervention. Amen. In which the Lord's divine control is established. When I was singing in the shower, I will sing of the mercy of the Lord. God was establishing his divine control. My job was to respond to it. Now, I didn't hear him say sing the song, but it was an impromptu. It was an intimation. It was something that God revealed in me. And somehow my spirit knew to respond to it and sing to it. This is how we're being trained. Why? For the instantaneous so that you're, there are going to be things that are going to come upon the earth that we need to be instantly ready for. There are things God is going to have you to do that he's going to do in a moment. But if you're trained to walk, if you're trained to walk in a moment, you can function in a moment. That's the difference between the church age and the kingdom age. The church age is the anointing coming upon you and then you doing what you were supposed to be doing and then it leaves. And we live that up and down syndrome life of Christianity, always looking for the anointing. How many times you hear that word? I pray for the anointing. I'm looking for the anointing. And yet the anointing abides within us. The anointing is a person. The anointing is a person of the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son. The anointing is a person. And that person is to live in us and work in us. Amen. In him we live and move, have our being. And so in the spontaneity of the Lord. Psalm 32, 8. I will teach you and instruct you. I, the Lord. Notice it says, I, the Lord. See, that's important. I, the Lord. See, that it requires lordship because lordship requires headship, which means he has to be in control. As long as I'm in control, he can't be. In the church age, it's the, we, we've sometimes had the Lord in control and most of the time we're in control. That's why the mixture. I'm pausing sometimes to allow that word to work. The Lord's having me stop just to allow that word to work. Psalm 32, 8. I, the Lord, will teach you and train you, instruct you. See, that requires an intimate relationship with the Lord, doesn't it? I will teach you, train you, and instruct you, which requires us to have that, that ear that's pricked by the Lord in Isaiah 50, verse 4 and 5. Morning by morning, he awakens my ear. What does awaken means? It means we become sensitive to his leading. We become sensitive to his voice. We become sensitive to his movements. We become sensitive to his directions. And there's an inner working of God that goes beyond your senses. The glory of God goes past your senses. It goes past your understanding. And it operates within you because we were made for it. And in that glory comes a teachability and a functionality so that as Jesus said as the voice comes to me as I'm taught by the Lord I do exactly what I'm taught see that's functionality that's teachability that's John chapter 5 let's look at it John 
John chapter 5, verse 30. I'm able to do nothing of my own accord, independently of my own accord, but only as I'm taught by God. The Lord God has given me, Isaiah 50, verse 4 and 5, the tongue of the learned, that I might know how to speak. Do you see what I'm talking about this morning? God's glory, the teacher, the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, the fullness, the seven spirits of God come in glory to teach you, train you, guide you in the ways that you should go in complete obedience to the Father, in complete, complete obedience to the words that were written about you in his book before you were born. He wrote down our days and what we were supposed to do. It's the glory of God. It's the glory of God that's completing us and finishing us. What the church age couldn't do by living in the outer course of the holy place, the kingdom age of living behind the veil is going to finish and complete us. I can do nothing. I'm able to do nothing of myself, but only as I'm taught by God. And as I get his orders, even as I hear, I judge and I make my decisions as the voice comes to me. Now that voice comes to me can come in a direct command of the Lord or an intimation or the guidance of his own eye. This morning, as I came back into the room, I, I did not plan this. I have no idea what I'm gonna share every time I get on here with you, I have no idea. I just stay before the Lord and allow the Lord to pull out what he wants because he knows you. He knows who's gonna be on this broadcast today and he knows me, he knows exactly what we need to hear. He knows exactly what he needs to do in your heart today. And this word that he's having me bring, it's, a, it's, it's not just a word, you know, a, a message like in the church age. It, 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 it is a impartation of hidden manna, food for us to grow by, food, solid food for us to eat that will strengthen you confirm to you, establish within you so that your life will be able to grow deeper and deeper into the heart of the Lord and oneness with him. That's why you don't hear me trying to bring you to flame of fire ministry or bring you to me because that's not what he asked me to do. He told me to bring them to you, him. He told me to take their hand, lift it up into my hand and when they get it firmly, let go and get out of the way. So bring them to me. I pray that's what I'm doing. We're learning the ways of the Lord together. Many of you know this already, but we have not known it in the kingdom age. We've not experienced it in this way. We've never been here before. We've never experienced the Lord in this, in this realm of glory, this finishing glory of the Lord. And God has to reveal it in us if he's gonna reveal it through us. It has to be revealed in us. It has to become our life, our experience before he can reveal it through us. That's why many in the church age that are getting kingdom revelation are bypassing that process. They're bypassing the process of that word becoming flesh. They, they're getting the revelation and, and they want to run with it. That's what we did in the church age. And look at, look at the mess we made by doing that. See, we have to receive it. It has to become our life. The word has to become flesh within us if it's gonna come out through us. I can only truly minister the life of the Lord Jesus to those that hear by the life of the Lord Jesus I allow to work in within me. I can tell you about it. I can speak about it from my head. I can tell you all the principles of the gospel. I can tell you what you need to do. Okay, but then it becomes an intellectual teaching based on the wisdom of man. But if I can speak out of that substance of the Lord, of that which the Lord Jesus has worked within me, and if the Lord Jesus within me can speak his word through me, you're going to receive a much deeper impartation of life that will change you and transform you because that's what the word does. When it's spoken, it's not, it's beyond just a rhema word. It's the spirit of prophecy. It's the word revealed. The person, it's the message and the messenger being revealed. Not just the message, but it's the revelation of the messenger and the message together. 
In the church age, we reveal the message. We speak the message to try to get people to see the message. In the kingdom age, the messenger and message are one. And he's one in us and one with us. And must operate through us as one. And for him to do that, he's got to teach us and instruct us in the ways that we need to go. That's how Jesus did it. As the voice comes to me, I give my decision and my judgments are right because I don't seek my own aim, consult my own will, and I have no desire to do what is pleasing to me. My own purpose, my own aim, but only the will and pleasure of the Father who sent me. Isn't it just like God to have us start off like worshiping him today? Because what's it about? Only the will and the pleasure of him who sent us. Why can't he say, Henry, just sing this song to me? All right? All I heard there was sing that song. And here we are. As we gave the Lord what he wanted. Overwhelming love. We had to receive overwhelming love, and he wanted us to give that overwhelming love back to him. If that's all this broadcast was about today, that's all it, that's fine with me. But I believe what God is showing us is how to follow that cloud by day and fire by night. How to be trained and instructed in the ways that we should go. This is the deepest revelation of his lordship we've ever known because in the glory there's a continuous state of intervention to be under his divine control see the intervention and divine control have to go together if the intervention of the lord in our life doesn't bring us under his headship connect us with his complete headship then it's really not of him because it must bring us to that complete yieldedness of his lordship over our life, his lordship within our life. That's what this glory realm is. It's to establish the lordship, the government of God within us. How can I even be trusted with the government of earth if I can't be trusted with the government of God in me? That's the danger of trying to run ahead with the revelation of the kingdom of God and trying to build things and do things when it's not quite worked within us yet. You can build with an anointing. But even that which is built with anointing may not last. Why? Because was it with a mixture or was it pure? Only that is the pure holy love of God is going to last. The anointing abides, abides within us. The kingdom of God is where? Within you. Christ Jesus, the hope of glory. Amen. So we're living in a continuous state of divine intervention. In which the Lord's divine control will be effective. Effective. And that's the glory of Psalm 32 and 8. Let's go over to Psalm 32, 8. I'm spending a lot of time on that scripture deliberately. It sounds like I repeat myself over and over again, but you have to look at it this way. Think about a guy who has to um, make a road. And that road is really rocky. And he has to take a jackhammer to dig up the rock. Why? So that they can get to the dirt to lay a pavement. That's what it's like sometimes. The Lord is, so he has me repeat it and repeat it because it's actually doing a work. And each time it gets deeper and deeper. Psalm 32, eight says, I, the Lord, the Amplified, I, the Lord. Look what it says, will instruct you. It doesn't say might instruct you, will instruct you. Instruct who? Those that have an ear to hear. He that has an ear to hear, let them hear. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I may know how to speak a word in season to them that are weary. Morning by morning, this is how you get it. He awakens me. He awakens my ear. Has to be taught. 
that represents a continual gaze of your soul upon the Lord. It means that you're ever looking for the Lord to come. They that wait upon the Lord. Do you know that word means wait, anticipate, and expect the Lord to come? I remember my spiritual father teaching me, teaching us about intimacy with the Lord. And he said he would go into his room and he would close the door. And he would just sit like this with his hands up quietly. And he would look towards that door, expecting the Lord to come in at any moment. I love that. I've never forgotten that because that's what I do. I'm waiting for the Lord to open that door because I've opened up my heart and said, come in. And when he comes in, he comes in, right? He'll sup with you. As I came this morning and I heard just sing that song, it opened the door for him to come. And we all experienced it. For the first 30 minutes of this broadcast, we all experienced that of the Lord coming and what he wanted. And we were able to love him and be with him and adore him. And he was able to love and adore us and fellowship. I'll come in to you. I'll sup with you and you'll sup with me. We supped with the Lord. We gave the Lord. We fed the Lord our worship. And the Lord has fed us with his glory. As we learn that, as that becomes our continual state of being in the Lord, of that union and communion with him, as one with him, as a bride with a bridegroom. We occupy till he comes and he's going to come suddenly, spontaneously. And that's why the last two gatherings were such spontaneous gatherings. The one before was all about healing. And out of that, he gave me that one song, Arise Up. I say to you, rise up. Come and take my hand and walk with me. Rise up, rise up, rise up. Those were two apostolic prophetic songs from the seven spirits of God last week and this week. I have no idea of what the Lord wants. I have no idea what my day is going to be today. But I do know this because I'm looking for him and because you're looking for him. He's come to teach us and instruct us in what the ways in the ways that we should go. I will teach you and instruct you in the way you should go. What does that sound like to you? Doesn't that sound like his desire to be the leader? Doesn't that sound like someone that's supposed to be the head over the body? I'm going to lead you and guide you in the way that should go. Isn't that what Jesus said? I'm able to do nothing of my own and my own authority, but as the voice comes to me, the father dearly, tenderly loves me. And he shows me these things because he loves me. And he's going to show me even greater than these things. Why? Because I have no desire to do my own will. I am completely teachable. I'm completely open to whatever my father's desires are. I'm ready to be taught. I'm ready to see. I'm ready to hear. I'm going to stay in that intimate, constant state of divine intervention with my father. And in that intervention state of my father, I'm going to show him to you. He's going to be seen through me. Everything that my life is going to be the reflection of his life. Why? Because I'm in that continuous state of intervention and communion with him. That's Jesus speaking to the Father. And then he prays for us in John 17. Father, that glory, what I just described, that continuous state of intervention, says the glory you've given me, I give to them. That as Father, you are in me and I am in you, that they and we shall be one, perfectly united. Can't you see it? Do you see how we can become perfectly united first in the Lord with one another? Can you see how God can build us into a kingdom, a wheel within a wheel, without competition, without strife, without division of all that stuff we had in the church age? It's not about big people, little people, clergy, no clergy. It's about God, Jesus being the head over the body, the Lord of hosts. And we, because of that walk and that work of the Lord within us are able to flow in that with him because he's established his headship completely over our lives. We can see the Lord the way he wants to be seen and we can see each other the way that we need to see each other. And we can love one another as he has loved us. Can you imagine? Jesus said, listen, I live in a continuous state with my father. 
I have no aim, no desire, no purpose to do anything of my own accord. So everything you see, everything you hear is out of that connection of that divine intervention as the Father is complete Lord over my life. I'm only doing and living and saying and being exactly why I'm here for, my, for his purposes. So that everything you see, everything you hear from me is a reflection of my Father's glory. And then Jesus said, as I was in the world, so I, so I send you. We are to be the reflection of that same glory. The glory, that, that glory of complete obedience to Jesus' headship. That it should be so seen within us, so worked within us, that we become that transparent sea of glass in Revelation chapter 5, 4. And out of that sea of glass, that we become transparent so that only his glory, what glory? That we've been taught by the Lord. Glory that we've been instructed by the Lord. Glory that the spirit of prophecy is teaching us and speaking to us from the seven spirits of God that we are only living and moving and doing exactly and only what the Father would have us to do for the glory of the, the glory of the Son. We are we are, Jesus was the firstborn of many brethren. As he was in the world, so are we. And this is the daily hour of 2 Thessalonians 1.10 that Jesus has come to be seen. He has come to be seen glorified. See, glorified. This is what I'm talking about, to be seen glorified within his saints. This is the glory, the glorified place of that state of being taught by the Lord, understanding the timing and the seasons of the Lord, understanding that glory brings refining fire and fuller soap, spirit of burning, spirit of judgment, but it brings us to a place of teachability, of teachability so that we can have a functionality. Glory functions. The glory functions because it's the expression of the will of God upon the earth. Glory brings forth the expression of the will of God on the earth. It brings forth the reality of the unseen to become seen, the invisible to become visible. That's what glory does. It takes that which is unseen and makes it seen, the invisible to become visible. For that to happen, we have to have that we have to be awakened and we're awakened by a command of the Lord in Isaiah 60, arise and shine for your light has come. Why? Your light, the glory of Jesus has come and that glory shall be what seen. See, it's got to be seen what risen upon us. I can talk about glory till I'm blue in the face. My life must become the reflection of that glory. The glory that's contained in this earthen vessel has to be seen in me and risen upon me by his parousia surrounding us. Surrounded in that glory. Amen. And with that glory comes God's divine intervention, his continuous intervention. And that intervening is a continuous state of being taught. I'm going to teach and I'm going to instruct you. That's what I pray you're getting from this section of the Perusia broadcast. Is that you must be looking for this. You must be asking for it. You must be seeking this. Because when you pray, when you come to pray, you seek the Lord to be taught how to pray, what to pray, when to pray. And if you seek him there, he's going to take you up into the third heaven and have you pray from up here. He's going to cause you to see from up here. He's going to cause you to understand from up here so that your prayers are not just words. They're not just petitions and not requests. But the prayers that you're praying here are, are prayers that, 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 that reach the Father. And then the Father releases the answer through the Son and through you and through the Holy Spirit. So we can what? Release on earth that which has been released in heaven. So that we can bind on earth that which has already been bound in heaven. We can loose on earth that which has already been loosed in heaven. But for that to happen, we got to come into that place of teachability, transfer, uh, transparency before the Lord so that we can be taught and instructed in the ways that we should go. And, the, and the, those commands that God is going to speak from this place are like lightning because they're a different kind of a word. They're a word in season. They're a word in power. It's a different kind of word from the glory realm. It's not like, the, I said this before, it's like when the angel Gabriel came to Mary, she said, how can this be? I've never been with a man. So the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you and overshadow you. And this is what's going to happen because the word I'm speaking to you is, is, is a word of a different kind. This word must come to pass. 
That's exactly what Jesus is saying. As I am taught, I get his instructions and I do exactly what he tells me to do. And it must come to pass. It must come to pass. Jesus isn't doing it from an anointing that's coming upon him. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and has anointed me. He doesn't say it's going up and down to do these things. He was in the continuous state of intervention, of that abiding in the Father and the Father of abiding in him. That's why John 15 is so powerful. Abide in me and I will abide in you. Live in me and I will live in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself, neither can you produce fruit, fruit without abiding in me. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Praise God. Is this helpful this morning? I will counsel you. I'm going to teach and instruct you in the ways that you should go, but I'm going to counsel you. That counseling is an inner witness. That counseling is an intimation. It's an inner knowing. So not only is he going to directly speak to you, directly lead you, he's going to awaken your ear more to hear, but he's also going to cause you to see. And that's the other part. The intimations are the seeing of the Lord. Seers, prophetic seers have that in them. A seer, they just know. They could be talking to you right now and then they will see something. I know I've experienced it. I could be talking to you right now that I'll see it. You know, I'll be writing in there and I'll see it. It's like it's a, it's a picture and I'll see it. And then I have to write what I see or I have to speak what I see. This is different than a prophetic anointing where you're getting a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. This is a seeing. And the Father shows me. Remember John chapter 5, verse 20? This is what the, the guidance of God's own eyes looks like from the glory realm. The glory gives you the ability to see. The glory gives you the ability to hear from a different dimension, from the third heaven. In John chapter 5, Jesus says in verse 20, 19, excuse me, I, 1920, I assure you most solemnly that the son is able to do nothing of himself, but he's able to do only what he sees. Notice in 1920 talks about seeing and in verse 30 talks about hearing. Those are the two major senses that we have seeing and hearing because it's by seeing and hearing we can be led. The Lord wants our seeing and hearing to come up into that glory realm, into that third heaven realm where we see and hear. Come up here so I can show you the things that are to come. It takes a deeper relationship with the Lord to walk in that glory realm. It says, but he is able to do only what he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does is what the son does in the same way. The father dearly loves the son and discloses and shows him that seeing everything he himself does. Everything. Doesn't say some things he himself does. And he will disclose to him and let him see greater things than these so that you may marvel and wonder in astonishment. Notice in verse 19 and 20, it's about seeing and about verse 30 is about hearing. And I want you to see it's parallel to this glory realm in Isaiah chapter 32, 8. I will teach you and instruct you in the ways that you should go and the way that you should go. That's the hearing. Well, I already know how to hear the Lord, not from this place, because we're, the voice that we are hearing in the kingdom age is not Jesus from the church age. The, the voice that we're hearing that we are to hear in this kingdom age is the voice of a war trumpet. It's a different sound. It has, it's a different voice. It's the spirit of prophecy speaking. It's a voice that's speaking creative words, creative commands. It's completely different than anything we have ever known from the church age. It's from the kingdom age. Jesus spoke it and walked in it. That's why he could command storms to stop. That's why he could walk on the water. That's why he could cause fish to come into Peter's nets after he fished all night and there was none. That's why he was able to raise the dead. That's why he was able to spit in mud. Because why? He was speaking. He was, he was seeing what the Father was showing him. He was hearing what the Father was telling him. And he, he was getting it directly from the Father. And what the father showed him, he was able to do. What the father spoke to him, he was able to do. And he did nothing other than that. There was no mixture. That's why they, had been, they marveled at him. They never heard anybody speak like him or saw anybody who ever did things like him before. 
because he was one with the Father and the Father was one with him. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. This is why this is so important for us to grab a hold of this morning. John chapter 5, verse 19 and 20 does deals with seeing. We are going to become seers. Come up here so I can show you. I got you got to see what's going to come hereafter. Why does why do we have to go up through that door up in heaven? Because so that this day will not come upon us. What? Unawares. So that this day, the day of the Lord, doesn't come upon us like a thief in the night. We have to be prepared and positioned. Prepared and positioned. That means we're able to see or able to hear. Notice in Revelation and all throughout the Bible says, he that has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Do you remember John Matthew chapter uh, 13? I shared with you. He says, they asked him, why do you teach them in parables? He says, to them I speak in parables, I speak in parables. But to you, I speak the secrets and the mysteries of God. Two classes of people, the thems and the yous. To them, I speak into parables. I speak to them parables. I have to give them pictures of what the kingdom of God is like. But to you, I speak the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom. See, that's what we're getting in this broadcast, the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom. And God is preparing us. That's what you're getting in your alone time. That's what glory's come to bring, the, the revelation of the kingdom of God in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's the kingdom of God, Christ in us, the hope of glory. That we become full-grown sons, mature sons, that are now able to function under the complete headship of the Son of God. So that as a head, he can connect to a full-grown body of believers that will be formed into a wheel within a wheel, right? To release the end time purposes of God upon the earth. That's beautiful. But what God is, what, what, what the Lord is doing is that not only is he, Jesus demonstrating it to us, but I'm going to guide you with my own eye. You, There is a deeper hearing. We got to hear that trumpet blast, right? So if you notice in Revelation chapter one, two things happen. First, he has to hear the voice differently as the voice comes to me. And how does he hear it? Like a trumpet voice. So notice there had to be a change of hearing. And then he, has, then he says, I, then I turned around to see. I turned all the way around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I saw him, I fell on my face like a dead man. And I saw him. And look at how he describes. He sees. First, he hears Jesus differently. Then he sees Jesus differently. And in the seeing him differently and the hearing him differently as the king of glory, as the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, then he is positioned to see and hear the end time finishing work of the Lord in Revelation 1 through 5. And then how that finishing work is going to be revealed and transform the whole earth from Revelation 6 on. But notice it took a change in seeing and hearing as the voice comes to me. And the father dearly, tenderly loves me and he shows me these things. So the guidance system to be guided by the own eyes is you're going to be able to know within your being. You're going to see the invisible. You're going to know the invisible realm of God's glory. You're going to see the invisible realm of God's glory. You may, may not be conscious of it. But you are going to see it and you're seeing it. It's being revealed in you as 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 you are walking. That which your spiritual eyes are seeing in the invisible realm is going to be revealed to you in the natural realm so that you can begin to do exactly what you're seeing in the invisible, what you're hearing in the invisible. You're going to be able to now manifest in the visible those things which are not as though they are. That's a hard concept to understand, but that's exactly what the glory realm does. We're being taught and instructed in the ways that we should go. And he's guiding us with his own eyes. This requires such a teachability so that we can have a functionality of glory, so that glory can function through us. we got to make the glory our main function and purpose because in that glory, all our needs are met and the needs of God's people. See, now it makes sense to me when God said that to me back in 1992. I'm getting it finally after all these years, at least some of it, maybe a little bit. 
And notice why it requires a teachability as the voice comes to me. As I get his instructions, I make my decisions, Jesus said, and my decisions are right. And you know why they're right? Because I don't see, I don't consult any of my own aim, my own ideas, my own plans. My only aim and purpose is to do the will of him that sent me. See, that's the other work of glory to remove everything out of us that remains. So that's our testimony that we won't consult our own aim. We no more mixture. I may be glad when the mixture is gone. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. To them, I speak in parables, but to you, I speak the secrets and the mysteries. I'm going to show you. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to guide you with my own eye. And why does he have to teach them in parables? Because he says these words. They have eyes to see, but they cannot see. They have ears to hear, but they cannot hear. They have hearts to understand, but they cannot understand. So the seed of the kingdom falls on the wayside, into the rocky ground, and into the shallow ground. They can't see, they can't hear, they can't understand. But when the seed of the kingdom falls into good ground, it produces 30, 60, 100, where you can know the secrets and the mysteries. Today, you have no idea the glory and the glorious plans that God has for you. I don't either. But if I'm looking towards the Lord, waiting him to come through that door, and I'm training my spirit to follow him, to look for him, to anticipate for him, to wait upon him, where I'm putting the gaze of my soul, as Andrew Murray would say, and Brother Lawrence, the gaze of your soul upon the Lord, ever looking for him, then you can be ever taught by him. And so today, no matter where I go, whether I'm conscious of it or not conscious of it, the Lord will make conscious within me that which he desires, that which I need to say, that which I need to do is going to come up. That which has been invisible will become visible. That which has been not seen will become seen. And I, I think I shared with you about the kids up in Greeley when they prayed over me that one time. I mean, at the end of the meeting, I didn't ask him for prayer. I said, can we please pray for you, Pastor Ernest? I said, yes, of course. And the six and seven-year-olds and nine-year-olds started prophesying over me. And one of them said, I see you in Starbucks. Again, I told you this the other day. They didn't even know I go to Starbucks. And he says, and when you walk in there, the glory of God is with you. And people are going to cry and repent and ask what they need to be saved. And there's going to be miracles done. And you're not going to say a word. It's just because God's glory is going to be with you. That was over 20, you know, 14 years ago or something like that. Isn't that amazing? about what glory is. God showed a seven-year-old and an eight-year-old and a 12-year-old what glory looked like. It's amazing. Thank you, Lord. Glory is the substance of the king. It's the life of the king. And that life of the king, that substance of the king is our portion. Give us today our daily bread. Jesus is the bread of life, isn't he? That glory is the bread of life. And to you, it's been made, made known to know the secrets and the mysteries. To you, it's to be made known the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom. But to them, I got to speak in parables. So where would you rather be, a you or a them? I want to be a you. I want to be a them. Teachability re leads us to functionality and, and glory. We, we are taught by glory. Glory teaches us. Glory fills us. Glory guides us because it establishes the cloud by night, cloud by day and the fire by night. It says so in Isaiah chapter four, verses one through six. It says us that that canopy to be led by the fire by day and fire by night and cloud by day would be a canopy of protection around us. In other words, we're going to be led by the spirit of God. See, doesn't it make sense? Those that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Because now we're actually under that place where we can be led where we can be taught, where our ear is pricked, where we desire to continually to live in that continuous state of intervention under his divine control. See, that's the thing. It's not enough just to have that intervention of the continuous intervention. You got to be willing to come under its divine control. And if he wanted me to worship for 30 minutes this, on this broadcast and just worship him, in, what is that to me? Now, if I went with my intellectual mind, maybe I would have said one song. Maybe I would have even told you I was going to do it. The Lord, but I did, did, did no such thing. I just started to sing. Because it's not me. I'm not touching it. 
I'm not trying to make it into anything. I'm just following it. I'm just following that cloud by day and that fire by night. And as we sang, just like when I sang in the, in the shower the other day, and then the Lord just dropped within me that thought. I didn't hear him say it. All I heard is, where would I be without you? He could have been, you know, you know, maybe if I was like the horse and the mule in Psalm 32, 9, he would have said, Henry, I need see this word I'm giving you right now. I need you to sit down. I'm going to give you the A minor and I want you to play A minor and G7. And then I want you to sing it. And I, you know, because I'm still a horse and a mule. I'm still filled with mixture. It says, don't be like the horse and mule, verse nine, which lacks understanding. See, to be a horse, it means you lack understanding. So God's got to, you know, and, and it's got to explain everything to you. We got to get past the place where God has to explain everything to us, where we just walk in it and live in it. And the un understanding unfolds. There are things we need understanding for, 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 don't get me wrong, but we got to trust him that as he speaks, understanding is with it. When, when Jesus, as I, I do only what the Father shows me, as the Father shows me, I'm doing it. See, why? Because I'm getting understanding as he shows me. As the Father speaks to me, I'm speaking because I gained understanding because my I'm not consulting my own aim and my own purposes. My only will is to do the will of him who sent me. So I'm positioned to hear. I'm positioned to be taught. I'm positioned to be trained. I'm in position to be guided by glory, filled with glory, walking glory, so that glory can lead me now. The glory, who? The king of glory. He's the king of glory. That means he's going to lead me. And what does that king of glory do? He utters his voice. Where? Before his army. So that he can train me and instruct me and teach me the way that I need to go and guide me with his own eye. That one thought was a guidance of his own eye. When I put my hands on the keyboard, I didn't know what to play, but he was guiding me with his own eyes. And when, when I started playing the chords, that song, boosh! birthed within me. Where would I be without you? Just like the other one, arise. Rise up. Again, I didn't plan that. It birthed. The invisible became visible. The unseen became seen. And we, God calls those things which are not as though they are. And we're walking in that place of the spirit of prophecy where God wants to reveal the invisible to change earth, to reveal the invisible to change your husband, your wife, your children. Your loved ones. He wants the invisible to become visible. The unseen to become seen. It says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it even entered the heart of man the things that God has in store for those who love him. So can you imagine what God is revealing in you today? Can you imagine the thoughts and the plans that he has for you today? Can you imagine the glory thoughts and glory plans that God has for you to walk in today? If you would just believe it, if you would just receive it and know that Christ in you, the hope of glory will manifest in you. I don't have to plan who I'm going to minister to today. I don't have to figure out where I'm going to go today. The steps of a righteous man are ordered to the Lord. I don't have to plan to do the work of the ministry. As the voice comes, he'll plan. As the vision comes, he'll show me where to go. He'll show me what city to go to. He'll show me what home to go to. He'll show me what store to go to without me knowing. Because we're yielding ourselves of the totality of our being to be led by the Lord in that continuous state of intervention and under God's divine control. Amen. Wow. That went by so fast. Huh. At least it did for me. Thank you, Father. Look at how good God is to us, beloved. That he would teach us and instruct us in the ways that we should go. A continuous state, glory, is a continuous state of intervention under God's divine control so that he can surround us with his perusia so that we can be led by the spirit of God. And in that leading, the invisible becomes visible. The unseen becomes seen. We release on earth that which is in heaven. We're able to bind on, on earth, which has already been bound in heaven. We're able to loose on earth, which has already been not loose on heaven. Why? Because we live there. And we're living there. And there is living in us. 
That's what the glory of God is all about. That's not all it is, but that's what it, that's what the Lord's coming to fill us with that glory. Sorry, they're cutting the lawn right in front of my window right now. You can probably hear that. Perfect timing, right? It's Tuesday. Father, we thank you. We praise you. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To our God be the glory for the things you have done. To our God be the glory. To our God be the glory. To our God be the glory. For the things you have done, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, O oh Lord, we exalt you lord we exalt you we exalt you oh lord we love you so much lord we appreciate you Place yourself as a seal over our heart, O oh God. Let this word become our flesh, our life's experience, Lord. We surrender to you, Lord. I pray an enabling, strengthening, quickening of your mighty power. Fill us with your glory, Lord. Lead us in your glory. Guide us in your glory. Inhabit us in your glory. Give us wisdom from your glory, understanding from your glory, direction from your glory, life from your glory, breath from your glory, walking from your glory, talking, breathing, living from your glory, Lord, and for your glory. We love you so much. We appreciate you so much, Lord. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for manifesting yourself in our midst today, Lord. Thank you for my precious brothers and sisters and for all that you're doing in their lives and families. And all our families, we trust you. We declare today we trust you, Lord, with all of our heart. And we will lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways. We acknowledge you, that you, Lord, are directing our path. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, amen. What a wonderful time together. Amen. I was really blessed by being with you and with the Lord. I can't thank him enough for his goodness to us today. How about you? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. If we can serve you in any way, help you, please feel free to send a message. Amen. See on my heart, Katie says, amen. I agree. Lynn says, we trust you, Lord. I can't read all the comments, but I'll go back and read them later. Amen. What a blessing it is to be with you in the Lord. If we can serve you or help you, please send me a text message or an email at go at flameoffire2007.org. Amen. I am working on that divine convergence. I will let you know. I'm still waiting to hear back from a couple of people about where and location and stuff. So I'll keep you posted on it. Amen. And thanks to all of you. Again. Don and I want to thank you, all of you that are praying for us, encouraging us, and Lynn too, and all of us. We really appreciate your prayers, and we thank you for your love. And we thank you for those of you that have been loving the Lord and us enough to even send finances. We so appreciate that, uh, to, that all that you're doing. 
and we're grateful for it. We're grateful for the Lord's love for us all and he's showing us his love through you. And I hope he's showing his love through us to you and we're here for you and we love you. Now, if anyone today feels touched by the Lord and you're watching for the first time and you'd like to sow a seed, we put that on, a, we put our website and we put down our, our, our PayPal account. You know, people would say, I'm foolish to tell people, right? No one has to give anything, but it's the truth. No one does. Freely you receive, freely give. You know, you don't purchase the anointing. You buy the gold, try by the fire, but it's freely given, freely received. If you give, it's because you love the Lord. and God's touched you. And if something is valuable to you, the Lord will show you, you know, what to do with it, how to treasure it, how to keep it, you know? And so, but, you know, there can never be a compulsion or a, a, a manipulation to get anybody to give. And we just pray that God will find those that, you know, love him, the, the Philippian church people, that they love the apostles Paul so much that they, they loved him and they made sure that he was taken care of and he had what he needed to do the work out of all the other churches. That's what we prayed for those Philippian people. And many of you are, have responded like that. We so appreciate it. You, don't, you, you know what, you didn't have to do anything, but you did. And we are grateful from the bottom of our hearts. I mean that for your prayers and your encouragement. Those are very important as well. And those that so finances, we thank you so much for that too. You know, because I know it's a sacrifice to pray for somebody, to encourage them and to sow. That's your life, man, you're sowing. That's your finances. That's what you need to live. And you're sowing from that. And God honors that when you give it to him with the right heart. And we're believing for a hundredfold return for you. And Twelve baskets left over. And we thank you because that's how we're going to make it, you know, is by loving each other, each part supplying what the other needs. And so we appreciate it. And please remember us and continue to pray for the resources and the finances and some for our family. We need your prayers diligently. There's stuff that we need God's intervention with. And we want to pray for you too. So don't ever hesitate to share with us how we can pray for you or help you. That's why we're here. We're family. I mean that. So. I try to get back to you or Lynn will as soon as we possibly can, but we're standing with you all. All right. Well, have a very blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow, Thursday. And don't forget, put on your calendars. We're going to have a special meeting on Friday since we didn't have one yesterday. So we're going to have four, but we're just going to use Friday. All right. Love you all. Have a blessed day. Talk to you soon. See you tomorrow. Same time, same station. Bye-bye.